Psalm chapter 132, a song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. Lord, remember David in all that he suffered. He made a solemn promise to the Lord. He vowed to the mighty one of Israel. I will not go home. I will not let myself rest. I will not let my eyes sleep nor close my eyelids in slumber until I find a place to build a house for the Lord, a sanctuary for the mighty one of Israel. We heard that the ark was in Ephrathah. Then we found it in the distant countryside of Jair. Let us go to the sanctuary of the Lord. Let us worship at the footstool of his throne. Arise, O Lord, and enter your resting place along with the ark, the symbol of your power. May your priests be clothed in godliness. May your loyal servants sing for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not reject the king you have anointed. The Lord swore an oath to David with a promise he will never take back. I will place one of your descendants on your throne. If your descendants obey the terms of my covenant and the laws that I teach them, then your royal line will continue forever and ever. For the Lord has chosen Jerusalem. He has desired it for his home. This is my resting place forever, he said. I will live here for this is the home I desire. I will bless this city and make it prosperous. I will satisfy its poor with food. I will clothe its priests with godliness. Its faithful servants will sing for joy. Here I will increase the power of David. My anointed one will be a light for my people. I will clothe his enemies with shame, but he will be a glorious king. Hey guys, I want to welcome you to our study on the book of Psalms, where every week we uh, look at scripture and uh, seek to find ways to... Um, build our faith. And what we have today is a little bit of a different uh, kind of study. My name is Larry Stout, and normally you would have Rafael Moncondla here, but uh, we're giving Rafael a, a day off. And so I uh, ask a, a good friend uh, if he could give me a hand, and he gave me this. Oh. But I said, you know, we need something a little more than that. So uh, Trevor, yes. <laughs> uh, introduce yourself yes. to... My name is uh, Trevor Rout, and I'm uh, the pastoral assistant here at City Church, and I'm excited to be helping out with you today, Larry. We're very excited. And I'm glad you needed more than just the, the hand that I gave you. So, yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and um, what we want to do today is look at Psalm 132, and what mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Raphael always does for us is right in the beginning gives us a little outline, general outline of what we're going to be looking at. This is really uh, an unusual uh, psalm, because what we've been looking at is a psalm of ascents, which was a specific time when the, um, as we'll talk about maybe a little bit uh, in a minute, mm -hmm. but this particular psalm is, is a, a rather long. In fact, of all this, uh, the 14 psalms of the Psalms of Lament, this is uh, like twice as long as most of them. Mm -hmm. And what it has is basically two divisions, two major sections, which are both 10, ten verses. Uh, on, the, on the first 10, we find uh, the emphasis more on David, where David is, it makes a vow to God in the first five verses, and then, and then it transitions into the story of the ark from six to eight, then a prayer for the priests and the people uh, in verse nine, and finally a prayer for David at uh, verse 10. Then it all shifts, where now God is going to make a vow to David in verse 11 to 12, uh, again, God's response to the ark story in verses 13 to 15. And then we're going to see a prayer for the priests and the people in verse 16. And, and then uh, concluding with a uh, response to the prayer for David in verse 17 and 18. But um, so, Trevor, what, what stood mm -hmm. out to you in this uh, Psalm 132? Yeah. So one of the first things that stood out would have been the the. Uh, the, um, the fact that David is swearing an oath at the beginning of the psalm, and then later on we see the Lord swearing an oath yes. to David. Mm -hmm. And I thought that yep, that, that definitely stood out in seeing David's zeal for wanting to find a place for mm -hmm. God to dwell. And then in response, God's zeal for seeing the future king of David enthroned right. in Jerusalem. That's a key point. That's a key point. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love... Um, 
Eugene Peterson had a, a classic book, mm. uh, Long Obedience in the, oh, in the yeah. Same Direction, and he, and he notes that uh, about the repetition in the Psalms of a sense that, that uh, you know, here they are, they're going to be, they are required to go to Jerusalem three times a year. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have been during um, the springtime would have been the first three, the Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits would mm -hmm. have been during that time. Then, then we have Pentecost in the middle, mm -hmm. which was 40 days after the first feast. And then came Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, and uh, Sukkah, which is a Feast of Tabernacles at, at the end of the season. Um, and so you have these three different demarcation points where they mm -hmm. had to, to go to Jerusalem to make the sacrifice. Yeah. Of course, the story of of Jesus uh, when he was a child. That's the one story yeah. we get there in Luke chapter 2 where they went for the Passover festival and Jesus stuck around to, to talk yeah. to, the, to the, yeah. the leaders. But now imagine three times a year they're doing this and they have essentially 14 psalms that they use mm -hmm. for this. Uh, Peterson said uh, that it must be a dog-eared songbook. You know, they <laughs> yeah. must have really, really used this thing. Yeah. Um, and but what we get now in Psalm 132 is is a very different psalm than what we've seen through it. And actually, 32, 33, 34, these last three mm -hmm. are going to be uh, really emphasizing the the presence of God, the glory of the presence of God. Um, that that comes out, which is sort of like the climax, if you will, to the whole to the whole things. And um, I think one, for particularly in Psalm 132, one of the things that uh, I think uh, one one uh, commentary I think said it best when he said it's a God is a promise making and promise keeping God, mm -hmm. and that's a good way to look at it because the first part is where. Um, the, the emphasis is more on, um, you on know, David, David yeah. right, David himself and uh, the promise that was made to him and uh, followed then how God responds to David's, David's mm -hmm. action. Now, uh, if you want to give the back story to this, if uh, I, I'd let you do it if you want to. The back or, story to, uh, to well, David. Well, how in the world, here is, here's the, the whole idea of the ark. Yeah. What had happened? What happened to the ark originally? So the ark, well, I mean, obviously Moses builds the ark, right? Right, right okay. And then at some point is that the Philistines mm -hmm. that end up, there's some battle going on with the Israelites and the Philistines. And the Israelites bring the ark to the battle, right. and they're so excited. There's like this huge roar, and the Philistines yeah, are afraid, yeah. and they end up losing the battle and right. losing the ark, yeah. and it goes to the Philistines. And then while it's in their, you know, in their country, city, wherever it is, I can't remember where exactly. Right. But then they start all getting sick, and right. they're getting tumors, and all these mm -hmm. things are happening, mm -hmm. and they're like, "We got to get rid of this." This thing. is First Samuel six, by the yeah, way. Yeah. All this is happening. The beginning right. of First Samuel, yeah. And so then they. I think, what is it? They take like two cows and they just set up the ark and they're like, if it just starts, yep. if it stays on the trail, then that means that God mm -hmm. is, you know, punishing us for this basically. And it goes out and it ends up in, uh, where is it? Is it jars? Well, and they got it? it, you're right. And when by the, we get to this in uh, 1 Samuel uh, 7, 7, where it actually got there and kind of just got forgotten, yeah. quite frankly, <laughs> for 20 years. It's just sitting there in where is it? Yeah, what is it? How does it say? Um, the fields of Jr. Mm -hmm. We found it in verse six, mm -hmm. which is actually kind of in 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 a forest. Yeah, it literally has become I forgotten. Think some translations yeah. say the woods. Yeah, somewhere. it's like the woods. Yeah. So it's it's like something you'd find in a you know the backwoods yeah, type thing. The Loyal Sox State Forest, <laughs> and you find yes, the yes. Yeah. This is what's so amazing. It's it. This is the the center of their worship. This yeah. is the most holy uh, thing that's ever been given to mm -hmm. them, and it's stuck in a forest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just find this astounding. <laughs> and and uh, David is the one that said, "Listen, we gotta we gotta yeah. do something about we this. We gotta bring it back. Yeah, we gotta bring it back." Mm -hmm. 
but he makes a mistake mm -hmm. in this. And, and that's where Uza dies, right? Right. What yeah. they did is they put it on a cart, mm -hmm. and they're all excited about this, except uh, is they're obviously going up a hill, mm -hmm. and it shifted, and it began to fall off, and Uza, doing an, thinking yeah. he's doing a nice thing, just to steady it, to keep it from falling off, and the moment he touches the ark, boom, he's dead. Yeah. Uzza was a, he's yeah. gone. Uh, and now this terrifies everybody. Mm -hmm. And they don't even want to touch the thing. So right where it was is where it's going to stay. Yeah. In um, the dwelling place there um, of, um, well, they say now it's in Ephrata, which is, well, that was from Ephrata, which is Bethlehem. Yeah. Uh, it's going to stay there mm -hmm. until David then says, listen, we, we want to bring to it back, it, yeah. but we better do it the right way. And now... They're carrying it with the poles, right? They carry it with the poles and yeah. making sacrifices like every six feet. Oh, really? Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it was, it's part. just so it's like blood the whole way, yeah. <laughs> which again is signifying how holy this is. Yeah. This is this. We want to just honor this so much. So this is this is mm. like a tremendous um, action on David's part. The fact that he wants this to be, and, and David, by the way, has taken off his clothes and he's just got a just a little loincloth mm -hmm. around yeah. him. He's dancing and the dancing streets. with all his might. Mm -hmm. He is celebrating. He is rejoicing. This is the mm -hmm. greatest thing because now. The, the presence of the Lord is going to be with us mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It's going to be there. It, we're, we're going to be able now to set up the tabernacle again. And, and of course, David has visions of a house that's going to be built. Yeah. That'll be later. And so, that's where this oath comes from, where he yes. says, I'm going to build a house for the Lord. And when we find out later that um, God doesn't want him to build the house, right. he wants his son Solomon to do that. And so that doesn't happen until later on. Um, yeah, until after David is gone. And, and you know, just that alone, just um, the beauty of that, mm -hmm. I find, that David has, and, and I, guess, I guess just to park ourselves just for a moment on David, mm -hmm. David was not a saint. Yeah. David made some really, really bad yeah, moves. He made, he, yeah. the, the, the idea of um, you, first off, it all started because he wasn't where he was supposed to be. At yeah. the time when kings go to war, David is was still home. hanging around. Yeah. It's like, I've, I've done that. Um, been there, done that. Been there, done like that. like a prideful thing, like yes. I don't need to keep yes. doing that. I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, I can rest now. So now while uh, he's, he's re, you know, mm -hmm. relaxing, he sees a naked woman across mm -hmm. the ray that, having a bath, and that kind of turns him on. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm king, I can do what I want, so come on over and uh, does the bad thing. Um, and he multiplies that mm -hmm. sin yeah. to the point where even has his... And that's uh, where the kingdom then divides after that. Right. And there's all kinds of issues that happen after. All of that, you'd say, well, David is not a nice guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is bad stuff. But to David's credit, here's a guy that when you read Psalm 51, mm -hmm. you recognize how contrite he is. He... Mm -hmm. he he did get off the way, um, but turned to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He had, David had a hunger mm -hmm. for the presence of God. Yeah. And you can see that. You can see that in his Psalms. You can see that even the way he responded to Nathan. Yeah. When Nathan, the prophet, confronted him. He knew immediately. He knew immediately mm -hmm. and didn't try to justify himself, mm -hmm. didn't try to get, well, you know, I was having a bad day. Yeah. None of that. He repented responded. So, you know, David is not yeah. necessarily a poster child for righteousness, so yeah. to speak. But what we can admire in David, what we really should take from David, is we're seeing in Psalm 132, mm -hmm. here is a man that wanted the presence of God in his mm -hmm. life. He yeah. wanted that. He wanted it desperately. He was mm -hmm. He was hunger for, hungry for that, and the Lord acknowledged that. Yeah. I wonder, do I have that kind of same desire? Yeah. Do I put things above wanting God's presence in my life? Yeah. I mean, 
Uh, yeah, how often do we seek comfort in, in other things besides the Lord's presence mm-hmm. when, you know, there's the C.S. Lewis quote where he talks about um, we're children playing in mud pies without, yeah. I'm not quoting it correctly, but without an understanding of what it's like to have a holiday at the sea. Like, yes. We're content with things that are so much smaller That's than a great, we great can actually, analogy, yeah, yes. that we can actually understand. Mm-hmm. So, And think if, I mean, think of your worst day. Mm-hmm. so to speak. I mean, what, I mean, we all have had worse days. We've had a lot of things bad yeah. go happen. God hasn't gone away. Mm-hmm. I mean, he says, you know, <clears throat> Jesus said, I'll never, you know, I'm with you always, mm-hmm. even to the end of the age. Uh, we are promised his presence. Mm-hmm. It is now part of, of, I mean, we have, we are in Christ. So we are with, he is with us. We are with him. Yeah. 24 7 it doesn't seem that way yeah and that's the that's the comfort of knowing that god is immutable that he doesn't change and knowing that my emotions go up and down all the time Mm -hmm. um, and i might experience god at different seasons in my life um, or i might feel like my in my experience i'm not experiencing god as i would want to Mm -hmm. um, or that i have in the past but knowing that even that that's because we live in a fallen world and mm. it's not that God has changed because he hasn't changed at all. Um, and just knowing that, that comfort um, of his presence in that. So, and, and thank you for that. <laughs> just, just that thought is so important. God is faithful to his word. God mm-hmm. will fulfill his promises. He is our heavenly father and we either and you don't you don't you can't be half pregnant mm-hmm. i mean the lord says my word is true mm-hmm. this is what so you're either going to believe it or not believe it mm-hmm. you're going to you're going to because if you're even on the on the fence you're not believing it mm-hmm. i mean that's really what it comes down to this is why again david is a is a great role model in a sense if i can put it that way for us and that, um, yes, he stumbled. Yes, he, he was a sinner, just like us. Yeah. Now, maybe we haven't committed adultery or killed yeah. people, granted, but... Yeah, uh, we've done other things. We've done other yeah. things. And so we deserve, for us to point a finger, you know, we, yeah. we're, we're just as guilty. Yeah, but you're saying he's a, he's a good example in that even though we know David sins, we know right. what he did, he still knew that he had to seek the, the, the Lord's presence. And yes. we even see that in when he did sin, he immediately went and he was fasting immediately, trying to um, to be with the Lord in that, not running away from that, not making excuses, but mm-hmm. knowing, you know, in Hebrews where it talks about we should be approaching the throne of grace with boldness. Right. And especially us now, knowing that we have Christ who has, you know, paid our debt and, you know, there's nothing that we can do that mm-hmm. would separate us from the love of God at this point. And so knowing that especially now knowing Christ has paid that for us, we should all the more be going to the Lord, especially in our times of need. And just listening to you, Trevor, <laughs> what you have just done is not just saying, I, I think this. You quoted God's mm. word. This is what the Lord has said through his word. Yeah. And this is what we are going to, this is what we are to believe. Mm-hmm. And out of that believing, we're now walking. We're, we're taking yeah. it and applying it mm-hmm. in, in our lives, whatever that might be. I think that's a, that's a great uh, hope. Yeah. And, and again, when we think of God's forgiveness, I, I, I mean, to me, I would not be that merciful if I were the <laughs> Lord towards yeah. a guy who did the things that David did. Mm-hmm. And yet, and yet when um, Mary is being confronted mm-hmm. by Gabriel mm-hmm. in uh, Luke chapter 1, that she's going to have a child, um, the Lord will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mm -hmm. So even in that moment, when Mary is being told that she is going to bear the Christ child, Mm -hmm. the promise Mm -hmm. to David that we read about here is being renewed or or being reminded yeah. of which obviously shows that, that god keeps yeah. his promises yeah in the midst of here's a guy that was you know 
yeah. a bad center. Yeah. But well, even promising. in the midst of all the people that came after him, too, all his yeah. descendants, that, uh -huh. you know, the, the kingdom's divided, and then they go into exile and all these things, and yet God still keeps his promises that he made to David. And, you know, and that's, that's, that's such a good example, too, because um, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. <laughs> yeah. With Israel and Judah, they separated. I mean, it, it, you know, Israel became two countries. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they got taken into to exile. Um, and yet somehow still the Davidic line continued. Mm -hmm. um, there was, even, was lots of opposition that happened too. Like was it, I um, can't remember the name, but when Jesus was born, there was... Uh, the, who was the, was the ruler's name? I can't Herod. remember. Herod, yes. Herod killed all the babies the babies under two mm -hmm. years old. Yes. Or even if you go all the way back to Moses where the same thing happened. Yep. Yep. Um, so. And through all that, through all that, God continued to keep his, his promises. I, I just mm -hmm. think um, um, what we're going to see here that I, and I guess just to maybe kind of wrap up things for, to apply for us, mm. Um, I love verse 14. This is my resting place forever. Mm -hmm. uh, I will make my home here because I have desired it. Mm -hmm. You know, we also don't think, how do you say, God gave us a seventh day called a Sabbath, mm -hmm. specifically as a day of rest. Mm -hmm. A day when we would just be able to rest, to reflect on the fact that he is with us, that he is guiding us, he is guarding us, he is taking care of us, uh, all of that. Mm -hmm. That we have one day where we get to kind of put that together. The Lord I, continually in scripture mm -hmm. kind of tries to remind us of that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the 10 commandments. It really isn't yeah. one of the 10 suggestions. It's right. something that we really should recognize how, how wonderful that is. Yeah, and it's it's interesting too thinking about the idea of like on the seventh day God rested and mm. realizing like God doesn't need to rest mm. like <laughs> Jesus had to rest when he was a human <laughs> but like God resting after creation like there's no need for him to do that and it's right. like him showing us like leading the way and showing us how to rest and what rest looks like which is really cool and we find our rest in the Lord and mm -hmm. that I think uh, I mean everybody I know mm -hmm. has had troubles yeah <laughs> crises terrible things mm -hmm. that maybe have happened and and oftentimes mm -hmm. uh, people say you know where was the lord when this happened mm -hmm. uh, and he was he hasn't changed he's mm -hmm. there um and i know that ironically at least in my own life and this mm -hmm. is one of the advantages of getting to be old <laughs> yeah. you got a lot to look back at and <laughs> recognize that some of those times that i thought were the worst Mm -hmm. terrible moments were actually when the Lord was closest to me, mm. when I needed him the most. Yeah, because you have to I rely know. on him so much more in Absolutely. those times, so you're always Absolutely. leaning on him. And it does become, in a sense, a rest, mm -hmm. because here I don't know where else to go. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I have a yeah. bankrupt company, or I've got a, a child that's, you know, mm -hmm. sick, and, and, and uh I don't know what else to do. I don't know how to get through this. Mm -hmm. I am not alone. Mm -hmm. I know that the Lord is with me. And I know that if I, if I turn to him, yeah, that, 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 that he's, well, the Holy Spirit's the comforter. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to find comfort. Mm -hmm. And even though the situation might not change, mm -hmm. I know I'm not walking through this alone. Yeah. I know I'm going to get through it somehow. Um, yeah, and it's interesting, too. Um, thinking about when we think of like resting in the Lord, we don't, we also don't want it to mean like we're not doing anything or we're just kind mm -hmm. of sitting around mm -hmm. and waiting for God to, you know, do something. And yeah, because looking at this, we see David resting, but it also says that he won't rest at the same time. Yeah, yeah. He's resting in the Lord, but he also knows like, Hey, there's, there's work to be done and I'm mm -hmm. going to move forward in that and move forward in obedience to what the Lord is calling me to. And so understanding that that rest, out of that rest comes obedience. Yes. And I think verse 9, kind of um, our response, may your priests be clothed with righteousness. May your faithful people shout for joy. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, Christians really should be 
people with joy. Yeah, I mean, should we, be the we, most joy because we have we, we the really, best news in the yes, world. Yes, yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I know it's, I know it's, uh, we do seem to have a focus more. We, it's more natural to have focus on the bad things. Mm-hmm. It's more natural to be worried about problems and yeah. uh, we're never going to have enough money. We're never going to have enough peace. We're never going to have enough mm-hmm. all those things. Yeah. Uh, but what I have, I should be joyful. I should yeah. be thankful. I should recognize the Lord has given me what I need, mm-hmm. which is what is in the Lord's prayer. Yeah. You know, give us this day, this day, our daily bread, yeah. not tomorrow's bread, mm-hmm. daily bread. I get what I need and the Lord will provide that. Yeah. And I need to recognize that this is what he's giving me. Mm-hmm. And if I don't have more than I want, maybe it's because I should just trust him yeah. through this. Um, just a lot of things you can pull mm-hmm. out, of, out yeah. of this. Yeah. Um, is there any last thoughts that just really uh, strike you and something that stands out? Um, I don't know that there was anything else that I had in mind. I was also looking at where it says clothe the, re- the, um, the priests in righteousness, and I was thinking about the series that we're going through in Exodus, and we've been going through a lot of the garments and how they're mm, clothed and all mm, these things, the mm. righteousness. And that's, that's kind of where so, I wanted to end, yeah. was the last verse. I will clothe his enemies with shame, mm. but, but... Mm-hmm. The crown he wears will be glorious. Mm. You know, ultimately what this is all about is the glory of God. Mm-hmm. And by uh, an amazing coincidence, that's our mission statement <laughs> at City yeah. Church, that we are, we endeavor to extend mm-hmm. the glory of God by making disciples mm-hmm. through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is, this is emphasizing to us the gospel. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, um, really showing us how, as believers, what we receive, which is the grace of God through Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. through his sacrifice, we live that out uh, following him, which, which then uh, ultimately what we're doing is giving God glory, mm-hmm. recognizing it, all the praise goes to him, that uh, not by might, not by power, but by, by his spirit, we're able to do all things. And... Um, so with that, yeah. um, why don't you close us in prayer? Oh, yes, Please. gladly. <laughs> um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you um, for that you are a keeper of your promises, Lord, Amen. and that you keep your promises to us, and that even in times where we feel like you might be far away or that you're not listening to us, Lord, we, we thank you that you are unchanging, God, and we pray that we would... Um, remember this truth at all times. We pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 Well, we hope you uh, enjoyed this study in Psalm 132. We invite you to come back next week as we look at uh, a much, 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 much shorter psalm, (laughs) uh, Psalm 133. God bless.